All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Raw Intuition Inside Scoop. I found another inspiring raw vegan testimony for you today. We've got Lori Knight speaking with us today, and she's going to share with us her experience of switching over to a raw vegan diet and lifestyle and just the experience that she has uh, witnessed and felt in her life. So, Lori, thank you so much for joining the channel and sharing this experience with us. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Yeah. All right, cool. So, let's just start off with uh, a little bit of a background on kind of your diet and lifestyle growing up or, you know, just leading up to when you decided that you wanted to make this switch. Mm -hmm. Well, like most people, I was um, brought up in a regular horrible diet um, loaded with meat and um, dairy and eggs. And I never liked meat. I always tried to avoid it because I just didn't like the taste of it. But, um, you know, my mother thought that that was good nutrition in those days and it was necessary if you wanted to be healthy. Now to the credit of my parents, we didn't eat a lot of junk food. There wasn't a McDonald's around yet. And so when we ate, we ate at home and it was prepared fresh. So that's really good. Yeah. And then um, I continued that lifestyle until I guess shortly before my 30th birthday. And I decided to become a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I was a competitive distance runner, marathoner, and I a lot of other people in that community were also vegetarian and um, were running really well. I wanted to stay lean so that I could run fast and so I stopped eating all meat. I still ate dairy, cheese, and eggs. Mm -hmm. And then um, that continued until I was, um, I guess, around 50. My husband uh, got some not great blood work and I had, was having a few health problems. I had inflammation in my gums and peritonitis, and um, my cholesterol was not great either. And so we had also, at the same time that that blood work came back, watched Forks Over Knives, which I know has inspired a lot of people, and it did us. Yeah, me too. I decided to cut out the what we were eating, cheese and eggs at that time, and a little, I guess my husband was eating, drinking some milk at the time too. And the transition was really easy for us to go vegan. It was really, because we had been vegetarian for so long, it really wasn't an effort at all. Um, so we were cooked vegan until, I guess I was around 50, 50 56, something like that. And um, I started to do the raw till four um, because I was already eating quite a lot of raw um, and I was also having some trouble with getting my vitamin D levels up. And I heard someone say that it was probably due to uh, gluten sensitivity and that um, probably grains might have something to do with it. So I, I cut out the grains and I had, so I was already eating quite a bit of raw food. Okay. So I, just, I stuck with the raw till four thing, not with the heavy duty calories like the freely type of diet, but definitely raw till four. And I was experimenting with all raw on some days. And that at that point, I got sick with the Lyme disease. Mm. Um, so this is spring of uh, 2016. I got bitten by a tick. I didn't know it. Um, it was weird. That was a strange year because the ticks at that time were microscopic. We were getting the little nymph ticks. Wow. And if you haven't seen Tim Van Orden's video, he shows you what these little guys looked like. They, yeah, he, he zeroes in on his foot and he's got three of them down there. Right. So they were less than a sesame seed, probably half as big as a sesame seed. And I didn't know I had it. Um, and I, I, I knew there was something going on in my arm. I didn't know what it was. I let it go for a couple weeks until it started to get the bullseye rash. And then I decided to go to the doctor and get it looked at. 
And they took one look and said, okay, we'll start you on antibiotics right away, which I was not keen on. But again, I had gone back to that Tim Van Orden video, uh, not that one, but the one where he said he had gotten Lyme disease and he was definitely going to take the antibiotics yeah. because, the, you know, the potential for um, that infection is very severe and you don't want to be um, messing around with it. Just take the antibiotics. So I did. Mm. So you're on a month of doxycycline, um, which totally wipes out any kind of great bacteria you had in your gut. <laughs> right. And um, so uh, they did not work. So a month goes by, I'm sicker than I was at the beginning. And I decided to really uh, go 100% raw. Um, at this time, I was talking to, um, I was looking at R the Revolution, Al. I know you've interviewed Al in the past. Yeah. And I have no idea what happened to Al. It, Al, if you're listening to this, I hope you're on some tropical paradise <laughs> eating yeah. fruit. <laughs> yeah, I've, but, tried, I've tried to find him. I couldn't. Yeah, he's taken down all the great information he had on his channel, too. Yeah. yeah. He was wonderful. And so he, I, you know, his channel really influenced me to start mm. my, getting my diet together. Great. So I started to get really, really sick um, and it just wouldn't go away. I started a herbal protocol um, from an author named Stephen uh, Bruner. And the book is called Healing Lyme. And it's sort of the, you know, it's gold in the Lyme community. People swear by this. But I, and I did the protocol, but nothing happened. I was still sick. And then I started to talk to Al on Skype. Okay. And um, he was suggesting a few things that I could try. So I started taking saunas on a regular basis and started really researching the whole detoxification thing and going all fruit for a little while. And then also started in some fasting, some water fasts and a few dry fasts. Now, these were pretty limited. I didn't do anything extended. Okay. These are like four-day water fasts and two-day dry fasts and things like that. Something that was easy that I could handle at home. Yeah. And also intermittent fasting on a daily basis. And, um, and then, and of course, 100% um, raw diet. I also did acupuncture. And um, I also started to get into the sunshine a lot. At this point, I really couldn't do any exercises, but I could still do pranayama practice. So I could still do deep breathing. And I started doing that. And so I don't really know exactly what it was that helped me heal the Lyme disease. And it might be that all those things work synergistically together to help heal you. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Um, but um, it worked. I started to feel better. Um, so I would say it took about oh, five or six months um, before I felt better. Wow. Um, but after that, um, I had so much energy. And I realized how great I felt um, on this diet and the more I learned about this diet, the more I thought, well, I'm not going to stop. I feel great. I really don't want this to recur, um, the Lyme disease to come back. And so I've just stayed on it with a few minor blips in the road. And I'll talk about that because I had an actual, the Lyme disease did come back. Okay. Um, so what happened was this past uh, winter, for this past year, so um, 2018, was a difficult year for me. I had two freak accidents. I broke both my arms. Ouch. And um, so that I had a lot of stress related to, do I need surgery? Do I not need surgery? I had to deal with the medical establishment, which is never an easy thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the holidays happened, and I sort of – you know, I, I did not eat very well. I started to eat more cooked food. But what I really think did it was I really had an increase in the percentage of fat in my calories. Okay. Normally, I try to keep that pretty low, below 10%. But over the holidays, from about Thanksgiving to Christmas, things got out of hand. And I started to get joint pain again. 
I didn't really know what it was. I thought I, I, I just sort of was developing joint pain for I don't know what reason, but I went back to my um, acupuncturist who has also had Lyme disease himself. And he said, oh yeah, this sounds like it's come back. So I started back on my normal routine, getting into the sunshine, pranayama, saunas every day, gentle movement, um, rebounding on the rebounder to move the lymph, getting back to a good diet, get rid of the fat in the diet, and it's gone. Um, and so I'm, in a way, I'm glad it came back because now I don't fear it recurring for some reason. Yeah. I know I can get rid of it again. And my acupuncturist seemed to believe that the two falls had something to do with getting recurring uh, recurrence of the Lyme disease. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I wish I had like, Oh, this is, this is the thing that'll get rid of Lyme disease, but I don't know that it's that clear cut. Yeah. Interestingly, when I went to get acupuncture, um, my acupuncturist also recommended a diet to me and I, and I thought, well, I wonder what this is going to be. Right. right. And, and surprisingly it was eat a very clean diet, low in fat, mostly fruit. And oh. I thought, oh. okay, so two healing modalities basically are agreeing one another, with one another. That yeah. means something to me mm -hmm. um, that gives it more credence for me. And so, yeah, so mm -hmm. these things work and I don't know if they all must work together in some way, but. Yeah. Well, I think that's important to discuss is, you know, people want to find a magic bullet when they're, you know, it's, it's the, the holistic picture that you need to look at. It's, there's so many different things that will work synergistically, you know, when you're eating a clean diet, when you're getting sunshine, when you're getting fresh air, you know, all those things work together. But a lot of people, We'll just focus on one thing, just the diet or just exercise or, you know, and then they wonder why it's not working as well as they want because they're not incorporating all the different, you know, factors that go into having a healthy body. Yes, absolutely. And when I'm online and I'm talking to um, people with Lyme disease on various Facebook pages, mm -hmm. the biggest mistake I see people make is um, not incorporating those other things, but also in terms of their diet, too much fat in their diet. Yeah. And I think that is a really important factor. I don't, I think it really blocks the healing process. I think you've got to get those nuts and avocados out of the diet. Yeah. Um, and maybe even go to zero overts while you're in the healing process mm -hmm. and then, you know, add in something reasonable. So you're getting, you know, your omega threes, but, um, yeah, keeping the fat low, I think is really important and no one wants to hear that. You know? <laughs> no, that's not a popular opinion. <laughs> no. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you hear that with a lot of different conditions too. I've heard people with, uh, uh, RA or other autoimmune conditions that when once they put the fat down to almost zero for a, a short period of time or for as long as it requires, that's when they see the most healing. Absolutely. And I, I've, I've sort of been following um, the advice of Tani Raw. Mm, yeah. um, she's been on this lifestyle for so long. Yeah. And um, so I, I sort of try to keep the amount of fat that I see her using as my guide. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also the uh, Texas fruitarian is another really inspiring person who ha healed oh. herself from uh, multiple sclerosis. So, right. Right. Um, yeah. And I think she basically has the same low fat kind of uh, viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you were going through all of this, did you have any sort of pushback from friends or family? Um, you know, telling you that you need to change your diet, get away from the, the fruit and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Um, the, it wasn't too extreme. Of course, when you're going through detox, you generally lose quite a bit of weight. Mm -hmm. um, my hair was quite thin. I really did not look too good. Mm. Um, and I remember my father um, looking at my diet 
uh, I was eating lunch with him and it was basically, I had a, a melon and a bag of oranges was my lunch. <laughs> and I ended up, you know, with this big pile of debris in the, <laughs> on my plate. And he just looked at me and said, are you sure this is healthy? <laughs> and frankly, when you're going through it, you might have some doubts in your mind. Mm -hmm. um, is this really healthy? I mean, you don't feel that great. Mm -hmm. um, so I can only recommend that people reach out to people who have been through it yeah. or people you trust to give you advice. Um, you know, I talked to Al from the revolution quite a bit in yeah. my journey through health. It was quite supportive and just looking online for other people who had been through this. Um, Dr. Morse has a great following of people and actually you can search in, um, what's it called? Something figs, raw uh, figs, raw figs. Yep. Fig? Yeah. I think raw, that's what that website's called. Yeah. Well, you can get testimonials and you can get people that have had similar problems that you've had and um, see how they went about getting themselves healed. Yeah. So the internet has been great. Um, I didn't know anybody in my real life who had done any of this. Mm. And um, yeah, there was some, there was some skepticism amongst people as to whether this was actually a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, especially, especially when it comes to fasting, right. people are horrified by the, the idea. I think they just are. that, uh, so scared, you know, what are you doing? And especially, um, I remember I had a friend over when I was dry fasting and she just couldn't comprehend that I was just not consuming anything, you know, water or food. Yeah. Um, and why would I be, why would I think that's healthy and why would I do that? And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you've got to look around a lot and do some research mm -hmm. um, and figure out, uh, how you can heal yourself because you're not going to get help from the medical establishment. That is not going to happen. No. Um, they are, are not, they don't know. Um, I don't think that really, I don't think there's a definitive answer of exactly what's going on with Lyme disease and some other uh, diseases, multiple sclerosis and things like that. Yeah. I don't think they know. I mean, for example, even the medical medium, if you're familiar with his work, yep. he points to, um, what does he point? Oh, I can't think of the virus he points to Is as the cause. Epstein-Barr? Yes, yes, thank you. Epstein-Barr virus as the cause of Lyme disease and multiple sclerosis and, and many other autoimmune diseases. So, the, you know, they really don't know what's going on. Right. Just got to focus on that lymphatic system, get, you know, all the natural, you know, get all those things we talked about, the sunshine, all those natural factors that really help to promote alkalinity and elimination and just, you know, oxygenation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And frankly, when you're in the throes of something, maybe exercising is out of the question for you but you can almost always deep breathe you right can almost always just do pranayama i remember days when i could not exercise at all but i could get myself into the gym to the sauna uh -huh. sit in the sauna meditate while i was in there come out do some deep breathing get into the sunlight that kind of thing yeah 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 so um so now how long is it how long have you been Lyme disease symptom free now? So after I had that little relapse, yeah. um, the, I was able to start exercising again in March. So not that long ago, I okay. started exercising again and really feeling good and no more joint pain and um, just feeling great. So, um, so that was another from November to March, I was sick. Um, so it takes a while yeah. to get rid of it once Lyme, it comes back. Lyme is tricky. Lyme is one that a lot of people just really struggle with. Yeah, it lasts a long time. It's very difficult to get rid of. My acupuncturist kept emphasizing to me what a formidable opponent of Lyme disease really is. And he has several people um, that he's working with 
Um, and I, I'm lucky that I have responded well to the things that I've done. Um, some of his patients have not. And I think it's probably due to the lack, like we talked about before, in integrating all those other things into their uh, healing rituals. So, you know, just going to the acupuncturist is not going to do it. Right. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned that you were a competitive athlete, runner. Um, mm -hmm. How has this diet lifestyle, how has it impacted your athletic performance? Well, I mean, I'm not expecting to run any PRs that I set when I'm in my 30s. I'm in my yeah. 60s now. So, okay. um, I, you know, you do expect to have some slowing as you go. <laughs> sure. But the thing about this lifestyle that I think it does is I think it really um, decreases that angle of decline that mm -hmm. you see um, in athletes and also just in, in people who aren't necessarily that athletic. Yeah. Um, so as we age, that we're not going to age so rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of um, my athletic performance, when I healed from Lyme the first time, I had so much energy. I decided to go to um, yoga teacher training. And so I'm now a yoga teacher. Oh, wow. I've had so much excess energy. <laughs> and um, I recover very fast from working out. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've actually added more muscle to my body since I've been on this lifestyle, sure. um, especially in my upper body, which always was, you know, had like little twig arms for yeah. lo so long being a competitive runner. Um, so I feel like I'm actually in better proportion than I was even when I was in my thirties. Awesome. Um, and I am still very active. You know, I still run, um, uh, most days and um, bike and hike and all those things that I want to do. So basically I can do everything I want to do. I'm not exhausted at the end of the day. I still have energy to spare. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been great. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not going to stop. I'm going to stay on this lifestyle, which brings me to something that's been really bothering me lately um, is the bad, just horrible rap raw food is getting right now. Yeah. Um, every time somebody decides they're no longer vegan, a vegan comes out with a response video and says, well, look, uncooked food is the reason that they decided not to be a vegan anymore. It's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Just because they have raw in their name, people think that they were like some long-term raw vegan or something exactly exactly and yeah. anyone can do any diet the wrong way oh yeah even if they were raw and, and in most cases they were no longer raw when they went off of veganism for, so, for many years yeah yeah and so i just worry about people getting a, an impression of this raw vegan diet as being so extreme um you know so extreme that you can't possibly sustain it. I hear that all the time. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Well, look to people who are doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, look to you, look to Tanny Rawl, Don Bennett, and Don has certainly done his research on this subject. My yeah. goodness, if yeah, you want documentation, yep. Jack Albritton, yep. uh, Raw Tropical Living, he's doing it correctly long term. I mean, there are so many examples of people who know what they're doing. Yep. And if you follow their example and don't get hung up on the, the minutia of it, oh my gosh, that, you know, that, that cashew is not 100% raw, yeah. you know, or, oh gosh, liquid aminos, oh, it's not raw, what am I going to do? Right. You know, just be more consistent than necessarily perfect yeah. um, is, is my, my message. Yeah. Um, and it's the same way I do athletically too. I'm consistent. I get to the gym every morning mm. and I'm, I don't necessarily, you know, go a hundred percent when I'm there, but I get myself to the gym every morning. So I'm consistent in going. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Once I get there, yeah. if I feel lousy, I'll cut a workout short but I still get myself there every morning. Um, and so I think the same thing for the diet, you know, be consistent with your raw food. Um, don't worry about being perfect and, um, and look to people who have done it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Tim Van Orden as well. I should mention Tim yeah. who's 
his ex, you know, he's at a very high level in terms of athletic performance yep. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Tim's really inspired me over the years, uh, you know, especially with his athletic performance, but you know, just, just his attitude and his mindset. It's been really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, his videos are, are really inspiring. Yeah. Were there any other physical, mental, or emotional benefits that you've seen since you've uh, gotten more into more raw? Well, I've, I had struggled for years with this dental problem of having um, periodontitis and they just could not figure out what was going on. I had to have a grafting of tissue onto the gum line. I had loss of bone around the jaw, um, bleeding of the gums. And this went on since um, from 2000, in year 2000. And then I go on this raw diet and the hygienist is like, well, I don't know what's going on here. There's absolutely zero bleeding. Um, you know, there's nothing going on and it is gone. I mean, that absolutely, there's just no, it was very clear cut. I was on cooked food. It went raw. Boom. I went back to the, I go every um, four months to okay. see my, my dental hygienist. And there was a clear, clear, and it didn't take long to clear up either. Yeah. It only took maybe, well, it took probably three months. That's it. And all of a sudden I was in remission and there's nothing going on with my teeth now at all. Wow. So um, that was a huge benefit. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but when I eat cooked food, um, I notice that my teeth feel dir dirty. It feels like the food is actually sticking onto my teeth when it's cooked. Yeah. And I do not feel that at all when it's raw, but there must be something else going on as well. It's not just you know, mechanical debris on the teeth. I, I'm sure that there's something else happening for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I have actually, I, I used to have a very similar, like my gums would bleed all, all the time previous to when I was on this, started eating this way. And now they almost never do, you know, it's, yeah. you know, so it, my gums, my teeth have been very, you know, much better than they ever used to be. And people want to tell me that eating so much fruit is going to rot my teeth. And, and I'm, I'm about to go to the dentist in a month or two. Hopefully I can get in earlier, but um, then I'm going to show everybody my, uh, my x-rays and all that stuff. Just to, just to give people a little reassurance, you know? Yes. I will be very interested to see that video when you put it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think you probably would have noticed yourself if you had, anything going on in your right mouth. yeah yeah you would know it when you're eating citrus you can really feel if you've got anything going on in your mouth exactly yeah um but i think and i and i noticed the way you eat as well that the addition of greens to the diet really helps with the teeth as well yeah i feel like it's they sort of remineralize the teeth yep and also, um, and I think it was your partner actually who uh, mentioned this, Celine, in a recent video that if she eats the greens, sort of the, eat a head of romaine after you've had a fruit meal, it sort yeah. of almost cleans the teeth off for you. Yeah. yeah. I feel that way too. That's exactly how I eat. I'll have a, you know, a bag of oranges and then I'll have a head of romaine. And I just feel like my teeth are really clean after that. Right. Uh, even if I've had like a couple of dates before that as well. It just seems to clean the teeth really well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the addition of greens, I think is important to mention as well in terms of dental health. Right. I completely agree. Um, what about like your social life? Has it, has living this way impacted your social life in a negative way? Um, well, I, I think it does tend to dissocialize you to an extent. Mm -hmm. Um, although, you know, if I want to, I could just bring food with me to any kind of social gathering. Yeah. Um, and most restaurants have salad. Right. You know? Um, but I guess I'm not interested in going to restaurants that much because I know the quality of the food is not that great. Mm -hmm. 
And um, frankly, a lot of social gatherings involve the ingestion of meat. And so I'm not really interested in looking at that. In many ways, I, I have taken myself out of social situations more than it's because of this lifestyle. Yeah. Um, because the lifestyle can certainly adapt to whatever social situation you're in. If you go to somebody's house, yeah, bring the, bring the salad with you or something. I have noticed that when I do go to social situations, and I bring my big salad. It, I have to really fill my plate up big because when I go back, there won't be anything left there for me to eat. I noticed that too. <laughs> Which really makes me mad. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the non-vegans are eating the food that I brought. Yeah. Brought. yeah. yeah. Um, traveling can be a little bit of a challenge, but once again, you know, I've found that there are a lot of places that have salad bars where you can get get food um, in a lot of the uh, chain restaurants. So uh, it used to be more of a challenge. And also as a raw vegan, you know, we're pretty easy to please. We can just hit a grocery store and have yeah. lunch. You know, right. they doesn't have to have anything there, but the grocery store and we can find something to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Grab what a I bunch really of bananas love. or a couple apples. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And what I really love about this lifestyle is the ease with which meal preparation goes it's mm -hmm. so simple and so fast yeah and um it's just it's just very easy it's simple it it goes along with my I, I, you know i i'm trying to become more minimalist so this fits right into that way of living yeah. i don't really um think too much about what i'm going to have for dinner i'm going to have a salad for dinner mm -hmm. and then i'm going to have you know some berries afterwards so I know basically what I'm gonna eat uh, yeah. it's very easy now my husband is a cooked vegan so I cook his food for him okay um, which you know it would be easier if I didn't have to do that because his food is very tempting to me to eat yeah and I do sometimes taste it uh -huh. so I, I, I once again I'm not a hundred percent perfect in this lifestyle I had, there is some cooked food that I eat. Once again, the majority, the vast majority is, is raw. What has been some of the, the things that have stood out the most to you uh, living this way um, that you think might be um, maybe a reason for people to consider adopting, you know, more of this sort of a lifestyle? Well, I think that Chris Kendall is a perfect example of this. We do not know when we're going to be uh, in the hospital, in the ER. That could happen to any of us. Um, so it's, it's wise for us to try and get ourselves in the best possible state of health. And there is just no question, if this diet can eliminate multiple sclerosis, Come on, this and you know cure disease and reverse heart disease. I mean, uh, this, there's just no doubt about it that this is the way to go. This is the way to get yourself into the optimal state of health. Um, so I have a congenital heart defect. I have a bad valve. Mm. I don't know when I might need surgery, and I want to make sure I'm in the best possible health to so that I can get myself through that surgery. I have a, a good friend who actually is in the hospital right now. She has the exact same uh, congenital heart defect that I do. Mm. She had to have her valve replaced a few days ago, and she is doing fantastic. The nurses and doctors are just amazed at her recovery. Great. And um, she and her husband are, are uh, pa you know, passing on the plant-based diet um, mantra to yeah. everybody they see there. Um, but one, once again, we don't know what's going to happen to us. What happened to Chris Kendall could happen to us today, right. going to the grocery store or something. We don't know. Yeah. Um, so and, if, and if people don't know, he, he was hit on his motorcycle by a car, broke his leg very badly, and maybe some other like ribs or something. And yeah, and yeah he healed very well. And he's been on a raw vegan diet for, I think, 15 or more years or something. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that, that's a lesson learned for me. And um, I'm not sure people really think about that. I think most people go, walk around thinking they're invincible. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
Um, but it definitely behooves us to get ourselves in the best possible state of health, um, especially as we, as we age. I am just appalled at my, uh, my cohorts, my age group, my peer group, the baby boomers. Yeah. And that's really why I started my YouTube channel was because I wanted to get the message out to people my age um, that, you know, if you want to age well, you've really got to clean up your diet. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And we were the hippies, the back to the earth people. Yeah. There's nothing better for the earth than a vegan diet. Why have my, why, why has my peer group not adopted this? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I have to say you are aging extremely well. I would, I would not have guessed you were, you know, I would, I would have guessed you were maybe 50. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's doing very well for you. Well, thanks. Thanks. And, um, yeah, I, I am, I, like I said, I'm just trying to lessen that angle of decline um, if I can. Yeah. Um, my, my dad died a, a very terrible death of Parkinson's related illness. Mm -hmm. I'm, I really don't want to go down that road. I, yeah. you know, I saw that aging process and I, I really don't want to go there. And, that, you know, I look at other people, um, you know, there was a, I think he's a Seventh Day Adventist doctor who recently passed away, but at like age 104. Oh, but he yeah. was still quite active. I can't remember his name, but. Um, uh, I am not thinking of it either. Anyway, very inspiring. And, and that to me um, was a nice angle of decline. You know, he was still out there mowing his own lawn. and. Right. At over a hundred years old, so yeah, I think he was doing surgery into so. his, like into his nineties or something. Yeah, I think yeah. So. and the only reason he stopped was because he didn't feel like it was fair to the to the patient to have you know because if the it was a long surgery, it would require a lot of stamina, and he just wanted to make sure that whoever was doing it could withstand that long time. But he was still capable, right? Know, I think into his nineties doing surgery. Yeah. So. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think we have to look and see, uh, look at other people, see, see who's doing it right. What are they doing in their lives? And um, yeah. And in terms of cooked versus raw, um, it, it just doesn't make sense to me anymore to cook food. It, it's not natural. Surely. That, that's what I was going to, that was the question I was going to bring up. Um, and also if you're eating a cooked vegan diet, chances are you're eating grains. Mm -hmm. I have no factual evidence for this, but I just feel like there is something about a cooked grain, which is not healthy for the body. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what byproducts are created when those items get heated up, but it seems like that is the critical thing about a cooked vegan diet versus a raw vegan diet. Getting those grains out of the diet seems to um, open up channels in the body, pathways in the body. I don't know what it is, but. Yeah, I mean, they make glue out of, you know, rice and potatoes and things like that. Not that potatoes are grain, but, you know, they use some of those really starchy foods to make things like glue because when, you know, when you heat them up so much uh, and then, I don't know how they process it into actual glue, but you know, it's, it's there to be made. So yeah, could have and some factor in it. Have you ever let, you know, your, your pan of uh, oatmeal sit in the um, sink and not get washed right away. It's right. like cement on there yeah. or rice <laughs> yep. it's stuck on that pan, you know, it's, and what is that doing to your insides? You know, mm -hmm. as I said, I don't have any, any evidence for this? I haven't looked at the, any research about it. It just seems to me common intuition. sense in a way. Yeah. My intuition tells me this is not good for you. And and going back to something that I've really noticed is, you know, a lot of people think that eating a raw diet is time time consuming. When oh. it's, I mean, I can make my entire dinner in 10 minutes or less, you know, my whole, my massive salad, I can make it in 10 minutes or less. And if you're cooking something, 
it takes so much longer. You have to wait for everything to heat up and you have to cook it and you have to clean all the stuff out of those pots and pans. You know, yeah. so it, there's just so much more time that goes into cooking than eating just a big salad or some fruit or, you know, whatever else you want to make. So, yeah, um, I couldn't agree with you more. It's yeah. just simple mm -hmm. and yeah, so quick. And as you keep pointing out, you know, on, if you're on the go and you need to pack something, well, nothing's easier than sticking some fruit in a bag. Right. I mean, that's just so easy. Yeah. You don't have to prepare anything. Just take it, take it along with you. And yeah, it's so easy. Yeah. And I, you're right. I think people, if people are looking at raw food cookbooks, that does seem complicated. That is yeah. hard. And I, when I first started, I did use all those recipes and, you know, uh, I think the fat content was a lot higher in those days. And also it was just so time consuming. It would take me, you know, a whole day to make a meal. And, and it's more expensive to eat that way. Oh yeah. When you're just doing these, you know, elaborate recipes, gourmet stuff, it gets way more expensive. It's more time consuming. Uh, yeah. It's higher fat. So yeah. when you eat simple like this, like we do, it's, I mean, just the, the feeling, uh, you're not so heavy, you're not so like weighed down, your energy is so much better, you know? So yeah. the cleaner, in my opinion, the cleaner, the better for pretty much, you know, anything that comes to diet. Absolutely, absolutely. And really half the time, I don't even make a salad if I don't feel like it, I just eat a head of romaine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> by itself, it, and it's fine. It's delicious. I think you get an appreciation for food which isn't adulterated and hasn't, um, you know, mixed a lot of different stuff in there. Yeah. You get a real appreciation for the taste of food just the way it is. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and if, I, if I make a salad with, if I put too many things into my salad, I definitely notice I'll have, you know, the digestion just isn't as clean. And you don't yeah. feel as great. So simple salads have really become, you know, my staple and, and they satisfy me. They're delicious. So, you know, there's, I, I have no complaints when it comes to that. I don't either. I I'm just so grateful to have found this lifestyle. I'm, I'm grateful for the Lyme disease because that actually propelled me into this way of eating and living yeah. and it, um, eating simply, has sort of carried over to my entire life. I want to live simply. Um, I want to not get encumbered by a lot of stuff, material items. I want to streamline, as Tani Raw always talks about, streamlining her life. This is what I'm in the process of doing too. Um, I really want to streamline things and make my life as simple as possible give myself more time to enjoy things, being outside, hiking in the woods, you know, playing with my dog, things that I really, really enjoy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to it. I'm grateful to people like you that keep the message out there. I, you know, I actually feel a little guilty that I'm not participating in YouTube anymore, but I'm really grateful to people that keep the message out there. Um, because I, I definitely watch um, and it, it helps keep me on the path. Mm. Um, when I see what you're taking to work, I think, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, a smoothie. Yeah, perfect. I'll just whip up a smoothie. Yeah. Um, so it's really helpful. YouTube is such a resource for, for people on this path, you know, especially those. Uh, I know they're sort of a pain to make, but what I eat in a day videos mm -hmm. are really important things. They really help a lot of us out. You know? I know. I, I've i been meaning to get more into it. So I've been, for quite a while now, I've just been doing these little like minute long videos, if that, because they're just so easy to do and they don't take any editing or anything like that. But eventually when I get more, you know, I, I, there's just so many things going on right now, but uh, when I have more time, I want to get more into some of those edited videos, uh, like the what I eat in a day, so I can put it all together. It's on my phone. It, it's kind of cumbersome to do that, to edit it, so I just don't even do oh, yeah. anything with it. But yeah, um, and, and yeah, with YouTube, I never would have found this lifestyle if it wasn't for YouTube. You know, I came across Dan McDonald and, and then John Kohler and Dr. Morse and and it was just off from there. I saw the documentaries, Forks Over Knives, like you said. 
and you know some other fat sick and nearly dead and then earthlings which really made me understand the vegan the ethical aspect of it and yeah it was just youtube is such an amazing tool and really? yeah and so i'm just glad to be able to have people like you on the channel to share you know because it's great to get experiences from you know as many people as possible to just show that not everybody is feeling you know poorly eating this way there's so many people out there that are doing amazing <laughs> and and you know you're not making videos anymore so uh they don't see that but so now i can bring you on the channel and just let them know hey she's doing great and you know there's so many people out there that you know just have other things going on they're just not you know they don't have time to make youtube videos and so the more we can highlight those people and show that there's a lot of people out there that are changing their health changing their life you know just everything has improved for them and you know just getting those stories out there i think is really important yeah and also normalizing the raw vegan diet so it's not yeah. seen this fringe movement right um, right all types of people are on this lifestyle and um, and and reversing diseases that yeah. have plagued them for years, like yep. you know, like my gum disease. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, uh, you're right. YouTube is a great resource. I never would have found this without. Yeah, Dr. Morse videos were some of the first detox things I ever watched. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you're right. It's been. It's been great. And that's why it's so sad when I see <laughs> it being bashed around in the YouTube community um, with, you know, from vegans that I, I actually admire. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they, they've just got it wrong on this in this particular point. I, I don't think that it's extreme. I don't think this caused people to become ex-vegans. No. It's not a cause. No, no, it's not. And I agree. There's a lot of people out there that I really, you know, admire and I, I get a lot of good information from them. And, but I feel like everybody out there, there's going to be like 80% where you resonate with and then like 20% where you don't. And so it's like, I see that in like most of the people that I kind of get information from, or there's, you know, there's little things that they say that I, I just don't resonate with. And I think that, you know, so we're probably not going to agree 100% with the majority of the people that we follow and, and kind of study, but, um, you know, it's finding what you do resonate with and just taking that all in from all the different sources and, you know, kind of making up your own determination on what is truth, you know, mm -hmm. exactly. so, um, for people that, want to start moving in this direction, whether it's to heal anything or just to feel better overall. Um, do you have any advice, any tips or anything that you maybe helped you um, find success in sticking with it? I did this unintentionally, but uh, transitioning gradually, um, especially if you're coming from a mainstream sad diet. Yeah. Um, cutting things out gradually as you go, instead of just going cold turkey, I'm going to starve, you know, my addictions and I'm not going to, that, that seems like a recipe for disaster to me. But I think if you can start eliminating things, replacing the bad things with something a little healthier and moving in that direction seems like a good idea to me. Now this happened just naturally for me going from vegetarian to raw to four to raw. Yeah. But, um, and you know, for me, the, uh, the most difficult things weren't really uh, eliminating, let's say, bread or, you know, uh, grains or anything like that. For me, the most difficult things in life have been salt, sugar, and caffeine. Mm. Getting those things out of my diet. Uh, oil was a piece of cake. I didn't even notice the oil missing from my diet. No. The caffeine, I'm still struggling with caffeine. Wow. Um, <laughs> It was just green tea, but still, I crave it. I want to go back to eat drinking green tea, big okay. time. Mm. Um, salt. Salt needs to come out of the diet. It absolutely has to, but it is so difficult. Yeah. Um, 
and, and I do struggle a little bit with the salt uh, addiction too, but, the, but getting rid of those things, um, if you can, seems to make everything a little bit easier in this diet. So getting rid of the, definitely oil, salt, and sugar, getting rid of those three things from the diet mm -hmm. makes things easier to do. Um, because the more you taste salty things, the more those tortilla chips are going to look like something I just cannot resist. Yeah. Um, and the and more other foods don't taste as good. Exactly. So it's when you get that out, other foods start, the taste of those other foods start to enhance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who knew celery was salty, right? Yeah, and right. <laughs> how to get this other salt out of the diet. Yeah. So I, so I would say working on those three things, eliminating those from the diet and then out working on, on getting more raw into your diet, um, to me is, is a better way to go. Mm -hmm. But there are examples of people who have gone, you know, today's the day I'm going to be raw vegan. I'm going to get myself healthy and, and that they have been successful too. So there's probably no one exact formula for this, but definitely try to, and I have to do this virtually. I live in a small town. There aren't any other raw vegans here. Yeah. I am the only one here. Uh, surround yourself, maybe virtually, with people who are doing what you're doing. Yeah. And reach out to them through YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Make some contact with those people. This is, Al was so important to me when I was going through this um, journey of, of getting healthy and, and getting into the whole raw thing. Um, I'm really so sad that he's no longer on YouTube, but um, so find somebody that you can relate to um, who's been doing it a while, who has the knowledge, who can talk to talk you through the tough times when you're really feeling like, <laughs> I really have to, you know, eat this something terrible. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is not trying to be perfect. Yeah. Um, you said this in one of your recent videos, and Jack Albritton recently was talking about this too. Trying to be perfect, that's a recipe for disaster right there. Yeah. Okay, okay you want some cooked food, you're, you're craving something, steam that sweet potato up. That's not the end of the world. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. That's actually not that bad. Um, it's not optimal. And once you've been on the raw food and you do incorporate that cooked food, you can tell, you know, the digestion is just not what it should be, but it's not terrible. Right. So make it easy on yourself. Don't try to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big one. Yeah. Well, those are some great tips and I would definitely agree with all of them. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that is one of the, the issues that most people has is the perfection mindset. Um, you know, just not being patient, allowing their bodies to really adapt to, to this lifestyle. You know, it takes a little while for your body to accept the, the higher amounts of fiber, the, you know, whatever else. And you're going to be eliminating toxins. You might not feel as great. Yeah. You know, just, gradually you know get into it and work your way into it until you're really comfortable adding in you know all raw if that's your goal yeah. or if not you know there's no problem with having sweet potatoes or steamed vegetables or whatever you know cooked plant foods you want to have in there but yeah yeah if you're going to fall off the wagon at least keep it plant-based right you know? yeah you know? i agree <laughs> um and, and try not to to add in the extra salt because that's just a, another thing another thing to take you down the wrong path because really a lot of these foods uh -huh. are not that good. The reason they're tasty to us is they have salt on it. What we're, what we're yeah. really after is that salt. Right. Um, so starving that addiction is a really important one. Uh, just a few quick things that I would say would be increase greens for people out there that really have the, the salt craving is in, increase your greens, some maybe sea vegetables and you know celery. Yeah, those are some of the more sodium rich, you know, items yeah. that people can get that from. But yeah, and also um, substituting something else to become your comfort food. Yeah, like for me right now, I open up a honeydew melon, and I just think I'm in heaven. It's my comfort yeah. food right now—a really nice ripe one. Yeah, and. 
Um, so that has substituted for something else in my life that was comforting me, mm -hmm. uh, something that I would consider a comfort, the mac and cheese or whatever it was in the day. Yep. Um, so try to find something that you absolutely love mm -hmm. and make that your comfort food. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, organic is important, but sometimes it's just not available. You're better off to pick that fruit that, as long as it's not one of the dirty dozen, that might be conventionally grown yeah. than to go for, you know, a bag of chips or something like that. So if you're trying to make that decision, go for that conventionally produced fruit um, or vegetable instead of going somewhere else to some processed whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. The processed foods are really, uh, some other YouTubers that I've seen fall off have just, they get, it's, it's, I see a common thing where they're so dependent on the processed packaged vegan foods. So, I mean, the more you can fall back on whole plant foods, it's going to really make a difference in how you feel over the long term. If you're relying on some of these really processed packaged plant foods, vegan products, um, they're still not supporting your health, you know? They, they're still, yeah, they're, they're plant-based, but they're, they're not compatible with our digestive system. And they just, they have a lot of ingredients in them that, you know, you just don't want and they're going to cause problems over time. So whole foods, it's, I, I just wish more people would focus on that for, for a fallback, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, um, the other thing I want to mention is, um, I am an ethical vegan. Um, I became really interested in the ethics after I became vegan for health. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely an ethical vegan. And what I see a lot of ethical vegans uh, doing is eating just, just terrible vegan yeah. junk food. Yeah. If it's plant-based, it's okay. You know, if it's not meat, dairy, or eggs, good to go. Right. But A, I think you're in jeopardy of destroying your health that way. And nothing says veganism isn't good for you like a sick vegan. Right. Um, so that, that is going to be counterproductive to their messaging if yep. they are not looking good and feeling good and healthy. Um, because that's what the conventional medicine and conventional wisdom wants to say. They want to say, see, look at these vegans. They're not healthy. Yeah. You know, so the more that we can um, say, look, I'm thriving, I'm healthy. Yeah. Um, the better, the better the vegan message, even if you're a totally, you don't care about health at all. Mm -hmm. um, your messaging is going to come through much better if you are a healthy example of veganism. Yeah, I completely um, agree. And, and people should, if they are ethical vegans, which I am as well, the ones that just are eating junk food and just not concerned about their own health, if they're putting themselves in a position where they're going to have to start taking pharmaceutical drugs, those pharmaceutical drugs were likely tested on animals or like gruesomely tested on animals. I mean, if you've seen some of the footage of what they do to these animals in these tests, it's horrific. Um, and pr yeah. maybe contain animal products in them. So if you really are an ethical vegan, you should look to making yourself as healthy as possible so you don't have to, you know, create a demand for those products. Yeah, good point. Excellent point. Exactly. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, this has been a really great discussion. Um, you know, I, I didn't realize... Um, you know, how quickly this, this diet had uh, impacted your, your Lyme condition, how quickly it, you know, you saw a turnaround. So that's been really great to hear. Yeah. The first time I got sick in March and I was healthy by September. Mm. The second time I got sick in November and I was healthy by March. So it takes it's not immediate, right. but yeah. There, I mean, some people are dealing with it you for can do it years and years. Years. Yeah. Years. Yeah, you, you can be eliminated from your life, or at least I should say, I, I think that from what I understand, my blood will always test positive for Lyme disease, but I, I don't necessarily have to have the symptoms of Lyme disease. Right. Well, I'm happy for you. Congratulations on 
on taking care of that. That's a big deal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and thanks for this. This was fun to do. Yeah. The interview. Yeah, it was great to have you on. Um, so I know you're not really actively doing YouTube anymore, but is there somewhere people can go and see your old videos or if, is, are you doing anything else on social media? Yeah. So on YouTube, it's crazy old vegan okay. and, um, yeah, on social media, I really don't do much on social media. Okay. Um, so I'm on Facebook, but I'm on Facebook by, as Laurie Knight on oh, okay. Facebook. Okay. Um, but if somebody wanted to reach out to me there, that's fine. Um, if somebody's having uh, some Lyme issues and they, they would like some help, I'm, I'm definitely available for that. All right. Well, thanks again. And everybody, I'm going to put Lori's uh, YouTube channel down in the description box below. And uh, definitely go check out some of her older videos. They're, they're still very valuable. So um, I encourage you to do that. So thanks again, Lori, for joining the channel. And everybody else, go out there, eat more raw food, and we'll catch you in the next video. Always remember to follow your raw intuition. Detoxify your mind and body. Be the change you want to see. Small steps towards living better Small steps to where I want to be